uh, oh, there we go. Okay, welcome back, everybody. You're watching the Premier League Season 3. My name is Triumph Man, and I will be casting this Best of 3 series between Empire and Eclipsia. Now, this is game number 2 in a Best of 3 series. Empire currently holding a 1-0 advantage versus Eclipsia, and in all honesty, Empire are the favourites here. Eclipsia are currently sitting on 4-14 to record on GG Net, so they haven't had the best of starts to their careers, only four wins in their past 18 matches, but some very similar bans being popped out here from Empire's behalf. Actually, no, wait a minute. Darkseer was banned by Eclipsia last match. However, Empire have banned the Batrider once again, and Eclipsia get their hands on that Rubik again. This time around, they ban the Templar Assassin. It looks like Scandal won't be able to get his hands on that. Also, the Invoker being banned by Eclipsia. Of course, Invoker caused a lot of grief for them. The very aggressive tri-lane that... Empire was running, paid off nicely. It didn't really even need the Invoker all that much, but he was there as a bit of an insurance policy. Throwing out those sun strikes across the map always helps ensure that an aggressive try and gets what it needs to be, gets what it needs to do done. Now, Tide Hunter and Chikira being picked up by Empire. They have picked up possibly one of the best supports in the game at the moment. Somewhat, there is there is supposedly a bug with Chikira where he auto tracks with Ice Path, whereas in Dota One supposedly he does not do that. I honestly don't know. I haven't played Dota 1 in a very, very long time. So there is that. Tidehunter. Also the next pick by Empire. Now the question is whether or not they're going to use him as a farmer or if they're going to use him as a support. He can fill out both roles. Eclipsia decide to grab the Bounty Hunter this time. Art style, of course, a very aggressive type of player. Likes to have those sort of gank-oriented lineups. Those very chaotic, messy lineups. Venomancer the next pick as well, so they've got one of the... Venomancer, of course, very strong in terms of just... Basically, he's, he's an irritating pusher, decent on the gank with his slow, he's got a very, very strong side. At the same time, he's also a bit of a... He's also a bit of a, an insurance policy against ganking lineups himself, just because you can throw those plague wards around everywhere and just keep vision on your backside there. Now, Sand King being banned by Eclipse, keeping that off Empire. Also, Chen being banned out by Empire, keeping that away from Art Style. Artstyle's lineup, of course, Artstyle is a heavy, heavy user of Chen. We've seen it all through his days. Dara, Navi, now on Eclipse. It's, he loves that hero, and of course, there's no real reason not to. It is a fantastically strong hero. Although last game, I'm going to say it was possibly their undoing. They needed a stronger defensive tri lane. The dual lane and the jungler didn't, in the end, really manage to cut it against Empire's extremely aggressive lineup there. They've also banned out the Enchantress. It looks like Empire are worried about that as well. And honestly, when if if Artstyle can't get his hands on Chen, Enchantress is a pretty safe bet. He might go for that. Now, Nature's Prophet was actually first banned by Eclipsia last match. This time around, he's managed to sneak through. Looks like we've got a bit of map control here. Maybe a little bit of counter gank insurance there, or potential gank insurance, as it looks like. It's a similar issue. It's a similar deal. If you're going for a gank-oriented lineup, having something like Invoker to be able to sunstrike across the map, or something like Nature's Prophet to teleport over, or Wisp and Chaos Knight, just to seal that gank. It is very, very useful. And obviously, obviously with the Bounty Hunters, they are looking for a very, very aggressive line. A Storm Spirit being picked up there by Empire as well. They've also grabbed at the Queen of Pain. I get the feeling the Queen of Pain here will be the... I think she'll be the farmer over Storm Spirit. I think they'll probably put Storm Spirit in the mid. Have Queen of, uh, Queen of Pain farm a dual lane or a tri lane potentially with the Tide Hunter. And Jakira, actually, Titan Hunter could be a suicide soul at this point, but Jakira will probably be backing up Queen of Pain at this point in time. I'm just looking at Eclipsia's line. They are likely to use a Rubik as, as a solo mid, so it looks like they're looking for another support hero. Never mind, I'll shut my trap. Dragon Knight being picked up by Eclipsia. It looks like in this case, Rubik will be a support, unless they're planning to have Nature's Prophet soft support there, or sort of soft support out of the jungle. We'll see what they decide to do there. Weaver, though, the final pick for Empire. Honestly, I still really don't like this hero in competitive play. But we'll see how Empire manages him. We'll just call out the players here. Who's playing what? So for the Radiant side on Eclipse here, we have Art Style playing Nature's Prophet. Vitaly Klutan, if that's how I pronounce it, playing the Venomancer. Unstop playing Rubik again. So he will actually... No, Unstop was a solo mid last time. Unstop likely to take that mid roll. Jackal, who is a standard, playing the Dragon Knight. And M playing that Bounty Hunter. That is a jungle. Okay, so it looks like nature's. It looks like it's all gonna. Well, the support role will be entirely on Venomancer's head here. Artstyle will be jungling, just trying to. And he is actually going for a fast Midas. Okie doke. Anyway, going over to Empire's side, we've got Blow Your Brains. Uh, Blow Your Brains playing Weaver. SS playing Tide Hunter. Scandal on Queen of Pain. Go Black on the Jakira and Funic playing Storm Spirit. And it looks like they're actually planning on. 
An aggressive try lane with Weaver. Unexpected. Alright, we'll see how this they manage to handle this one. I don't really... Weaver, Weaver has mobility and obviously he can get in there with his right clicks and Shikuchi's annoying if you get the... Uh, if you can get the bug, if you can get the swarm down on someone as well, it's also pretty painful. But at the same time, generally speaking, not really a common choice for aggressive try lanes. But we'll see how this one turns out then. And it looks like they're going to be up against that Dragon Knight. Venomats are backing him up, and of course, Art Star will be on hand if they need him. But at the same time, there's not a lot he can do right now, and especially not against that. That is a very dangerous line up there. There's not a lot he can do about it. Maybe he can get it with a good sprout, but we'll see. He is going for a relatively farm oriented build, opening up with the Midas. He's not going for a fast mech or anything. It's just Midas, Midas, Midas. Farm, farm, farm. Nature's quota all the way. Now we see M already scrolling himself away. He's hoping the creeper going to meet around about here and he can just sort of leech experience. We'll see if it works out for him though. See those camps already getting watered up by Empire there. They've also thrown in the rune ward as well. Meanwhile, Solar Mid is going to be Queen of Pain. I was incorrect. It's going to be Queen of Pain versus the Rubik in this case. Meanwhile though, it's going to be Storm Spirit up top. Funic will be solo farming up there instead. Denied. See how this one turns out in terms of CS though. I'm just waiting to see if Hydunder does have a smoke early on. And see, J Jikiro is already messing with Art Style. He's probably not enjoying this too much. And it looks like he might even try and get the kill here. They're going to get the Ice Path down on fun on Unstop, but they don't get the follow up there from Quita Pain, who is further back with the Creep Wave, unable to jump in there. Unstop though, taking a lot of damage, having to potion up now. He did go with a relatively eco... He did go with an economy-based builder and looks like they're going to try and get the body block in this. Somehow that fat dragon managed to swing his way around. Venomancer there. I'm not dead sure how he managed it, but he did manage to sneak through in the end. One would say maybe he, you know, obviously flew over the top, but it looks like he will get dropped here. He has been slowed. He's not naturally a speedy hero. And there's not much he can do to get away from the Venomancer's slow there either. Is the sweetest. The first blood there for Eclipse here. Things turning out nicely for them, but Empire now still putting some pressure on. Meanwhile, looks like Dragonite still going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Weaver here. Weaver mostly worried about getting his farm happening. Empire now. Up with the top lane, just checking farm. 12 and 4 currently speaking for Funic. On the other hand, it looks like oh, Bounty Hunter stuck on 4 and 0, not having the best of times there. There's not a lot he can do about that though, it's a relatively problematic lane. And you see Storm Spirit is leveling up that Electrical Vortex. So if he gets gripped in that, he's going to take a fair bit of damage indeed. Especially from that overload, just stacking on damage after damage. And now Queen of Pain, she's thinking about... Uh, no, I don't think she'll go for a kill here. She's only got a level 2 sun, uh, Shadow Strike. There is no nuke for her right yet. She hasn't got Scream. She's got Blink and then level 2 in the Shadow Strike, which is pretty normal for a range versus, for a range versus ranged in the mid lane. Sometimes we see them go for a 1 level in Shadow Strike if they're going up against a relatively, uh, a relatively hard to gank hero, like say, if it was a 1v1 against... And Invoker, we've seen Queen of Pain, we'll probably not even bother getting a second level in Shadow Strike. she just go for the nuke. she get one for the slow, but otherwise just worry about a nuke. Meanwhile, we have got the Venomancer scouting out behind the tree line here, keeping an eye on Empire, making Radiant sure they don't try and swing around behind them. As it looks okay, so we're seeing Scandal just picking off the Radiant Courier. That's all he wanted to do. That's a good 175 gold, but he is missing out on experience here. We see Rubik is getting a little bit ahead. But at the same time, Scandal had a bit of breathing room just because he forced Rubik back earlier Dying with the help. Tower. Under of Jakira, there's that Shadow Strike once again. In fact, Queen of Pain might even die for this. No, her blink is on court and cuts her way through the tree just to get vision, but she may have gone too deep. Pops a salve. As it looks like she does get the kill, though, from Rubik. In the end, the Poison DRT does tick him down. Scandal playing ballsy and picking himself up a kill. Meanwhile, Artstyle went to the top lane, didn't manage to pick up a kill though, in fact, just forcing Funny back as Venomancer finds a kill in the bottom lane as well, as it looks like they might actually get a bit of retaliation here in the form of Dragonite. He's one hit away, they should be able to get this, as long as Blow Your Brains gets the attack off. No, he pops the salve, manages to heal up, Anchor Smash will finish him, but they're going to go for Venomancer as well. Venomancer will get cleaned up. An aggressive play there from Empire, and it pays off nicely. They do take a lot of damage at the same time. Tidehunter will need to drop back to base. He's likely to get taken out here though, but Artstyle, Artstyle, they may regret this, and Anchor Smash cleans him up. A level 2 Anchor Smash, plus 2 heroes focusing him down. And Shikuchi on top of that. Oh no, Eclipse here, that was an embarrassing turnout indeed. Tight under though, being spot up. Can they kill this guy finally? Or are they going to give away another kill? SS holding his ground. There's the Ice Path. 
They get the kill they're on tight under, but they feed him another kill. They feed that Weaver another kill. This is going terribly for Eclipsia. I like the fact that Tyden are manning up there, standing his ground, just stacking on as much damage. He knew he couldn't get away there, just stacked on as much damage as he could before he went down, and it paid off in the end. See, Queen of Pain, though, gets a kill there on Rubik. Did she blow her ultimate? No, it was just harassment and didn't just nuke as well. Doesn't have her ult. Yeah, this is a relatively standard Queen of Pain build when they go for the Shadow Strike early. So don't worry about the ultimate until level 7, level 8 at best. In fact, generally speaking, <coughs> as I try and kill myself there, generally speaking, they tend to max out the Scream ahead of the Sonic Wave. And yes, Reed, so we are giving away Dota 2 keys. If you want to have a chance to win a key, just follow this stream. That's all you got to do. We give away Over keys here. after every series. It looks like, uh-oh, am about to get picked up here. He is in some trouble. An easy kill for them there, just diving on top of him with a dust there. Tide Hunter coming in with the support. See Scandal getting thrown back there by the Telekinesis. SS also swinging around to mid. Will he try and set up another kill here? Scan stop is somewhat vulnerable. There's a screen, the slow once again. Still level 6 for Scandal. The main thing is Rubik's stuck at level 4. He just cannot get anywhere near this creep wave. He's getting harassed back non stop by Queen of Pain. Every time he comes up to last hit, he just has Shadow Strike throw. In fact, they're hunting for Rubik. Oh, wow. Just bypassing the Rubik. Rubik must be counting his lucky stars. He assumed Rubik was going to be going through there. Unfortunately, Rubik went like that, and Tidehunter's already in the trees. Miss line of sight. So close yet so far. Nothing faster. Let's see scan. Oh man, this Rubik, he's just having now to do nothing. Losing that bottle was a huge pain in the ass for him. That courier snipe was not nice at all. Every time he comes out to harass in the last hit, he just gets sent packing by Queen of Pain. It's quite, he doesn't have the regen. He lost his bottle. He didn't have his regen, so it's just no way for him to stay in the lane or regen. As it looks like we've got a gank down in the bottom lane. SS getting picked off there. Dual breath, though, on unstop. We better come through. Going to pick up a kill here on Rubik. Nice and easy. Here comes Artstyle, though, to the rescue. They pick up a second kill there on Shakira. Looks like Weaver's going to try and dive after the Venomancer. They get the kill there on the Venomancer. Weaver's still fighting. Weaver needs to be careful, though. Dragon Knight could try and cause some damage, although actually, no, Dragon Knight doesn't have enough mana for a stun here, Arstar on the run, there we go, there's the stun, he's got the Soul Ring up and running. It's not going to be enough to take down Weaver though, unless some more support comes in from the mid. Nebrovska is actually, uh, rather, Blow Your Brain is actually going to just pot up there, Arstar hiding the trees, he is getting ready to teleport out. He should have his Midas fairly soon though, it is not that only of a Midas for a jungling prophet, but at the same time, could be a lot worse. At the very least, he's on track to pick it up. See, Weaver is actually going for an aggressive build. He's gone with a Medallion of Courage. This is a relative aggressive and this is good against Dragon Knight, because Dragon Knight is very reliant on his armor to keep him alive. Now, he's only got one level in Dragon's Blood, which means he doesn't have that much armor. And you throw on the Gush, the Bugs, the Medallion of Courage, that's a lot of negative armor. It makes it very easy to bring down that DK. In fact, the early mid game for any, for the biggest and fastest way to basically increase DPS is actually just neg stacking negative armor. It's a very, very effective way of increasing DPS. See Rubik though. Ooh, decide to back up. I'm just wondering if he's going to start. Yeah, he's going to leave. I'm just wondering if he'll leave Telekinesis at level two. And once he hits levels, uh, once he hits level eight, if he'll start maxing out Null Field instead, just because Queen of Pain has been a big big pain in the ass for him to deal with this match. Radiance middle tower is under attack. Shakiro though, I'm just getting gold at the moment. Not a whole lot has been mostly stuck Radiance in those support duties. By the looks of things, I think they're feeding Titan under money. Radiance yes, middle Titan definitely getting more cash. On the Titan buying more of the consumables, so it looks like they're gonna get the track down on Weaver. The ice path does miss though. Unfortunately, M. This is an issue though. M has popped down the bottom line. He's got his level six. This is Eclipse's chance to turn things around and make, and basically swing the game in their favor because right now they've got that track. They can start getting these track ganks off. They can reaccelerate farm and get everybody back on track in terms of gold gain. Unfortunately, he hasn't managed to find anything yet, and the aggressive trial line has really managed to solidify an advantage in that bottom line, so it's going to be difficult to gank that. Also, M did not do fantastically in his lane, which is to be expected. It was the suicide lane, and it wasn't a great matchup for him, but at the same time, it is going to be relatively frustrating. Profit also not that well found. In fact, 
Still hasn't managed to pick up that Midas. I assume he's going for a Midas. There we go. Has picked it up now. But they really, really do need to get those track gangs happening. Unfortunately, Storm Spirit is on his way to an Orchid as we're going to see the Electrical Vortex an easy pick off there. Venomancer has no hope at all. The Dragon Tower comes down on Funnick. But there is no backup. Scandal also rotating the bottom lane. He's got his ultimate now. Maxed out Sonic Wave, uh, maxed out Sonic Scream of Pain and a Sonic Wave as well. That is quite painful. They might just try and jump the, G uh, the Jackal here. See the defensive ports coming. Mass ports coming. But Queen of Pain is coming. Here comes her big ults. Her big AoE, she's moving into position here. Can she get off? There's the Scream. Sonic Wave cleans up just the Dragon Knight, but they get the... Uh, they managed to pick up the Weaver at least. There's some track money. Three heroes pick up that track gold. Queen of Pain, they're also in danger. Here comes another kill. Can they pick her off? They kill the Rubik at the very least. Weaver buys back. There's another track kill. As Rage's Wrath comes screaming through there and picks up another kill. Now, Go Black in some trouble. Can M pick off a kill? He's going to get the track now. No, doesn't wait. Oh, that could have been extra money, but at the very least, I guess. We do have a Weaver running around here. Uh-oh. There's that man. There's that Medallion of Courage. They throw the track down. He misses. He misses the Sprout and gives away a kill. That is not the best of results at all. You see, Weaver is actually maxing out his bugs as well. Oh, dear. This is not turning out well. For, it's not turning out too that well for Eclipse Door. They got a couple of extra track kills in there, but at the same time, still losing a lot of heroes in the process. They want to come in a little bit cleaner. But if they can still keep picking up these track kills, maybe things will turn out a little bit better. But at the same time, these messy trading hero kills things is Radiant's definitely what you want. Or it's the kind of thing you can facilitate with track spam, but at the same time, when you're already behind, you kind of want to be picking off nice, clean kills. But definitely, when you're neck and neck, when things are relatively even, trading kills with track is a very effective way of getting ahead. It looks like M is actually about to get picked up here. Or will he actually get away? One more hit. He doesn't have a teleport, though. He's trying to try and uh, wind walk out of here. Not going to happen, though. Queen of Pain's just going to scream him down. As it was like Rubik picks up Ball Lightning just jumping out of the way there, but he will get hit by Electric Vortex. He doesn't have any mana left. He will actually get cleaned up, and Queen of Pain should be able to bring him down. Manomancy come in. Misses with the Gale. Does get the kill anyway, though. And now Tidehunter is going to be forced to teleport out. Radiance top tower is under attack. Currently 7.5k advantage for the dire side. This is rather... This is definitely the telling part. Also, the experience... A good 5k, and especially when you have a jungler as well, and you're falling behind, there's not a good sign, because when you have that jungler, you're tapping that extra source of gold and experience income, and the fact that, that Eclipsia are this far behind is not a good sign at all. As you see, Nature's Prophet has actually, looks like he's also trying to get himself an Orchid. Has picked up a couple of robes there. Dragonite still struggling to pick up and finish his boots here. Now, if Dragonite had a couple of items, this definitely could be a very different situation in the mid-game. As we see the telekinesis on Go Black and a dragon back towards the tower. A track gets thrown down on Go Black. There is a kill as well as M decides to walk into the macro fire because he likes fire. He likes to play with fire. Storm Spirit, though, another 1100 gold in the bank. He is very, very close to this Orchid. SS also moving to back him up here. They might just try and pick off somebody quickly. If Venomancer gets out of position, they could quite easily jump and bring him down there. And looks like they will. There we go. The Electric Vortex, although Telekinesis on SS. Can he buy enough time for his Venomancer to get away? No, he cannot. A track gets tossed down for good measure, trying to help him escape. But it is a little bit too slow, as they also throw down the Cannibal just to check for Bounty Hunter. Am actually up on the high ground there. Might actually come. If he comes down by this ward, he's in some serious trouble. So unfortunately, Dragon Knight, 1100 gold in the bank, still not where he needs to be. Art style, still working towards those Oblivion stars. Definitely going for that Orchid, he's really committed, he's definitely committed to that build. Bounty Hunter also trying to get himself some drums for the team. Storm Spirit almost has enough for his second Oblivion stuff, very, very close to that. Let's check items. Well, Weaver, I noticed before, picked up a Vitality Boost, which is pretty stock standard. You just try and tank up Weaver a little bit to make him difficult to knock out. And he has actually picked up a Demon's Edge as well. Oh. Okay, then. He is going straight for some serious damage. We're not seeing the Weaver Radiance build at all, or even the, Weedy, well, the Weaver Mantis style build. He's just going for straight raw damage. 
He's got all his vitality. He's decided he's got all his defensive stuff sorted out. He's going to have obviously have a mech on his team somewhere. Some oh no, he's not actually. This is a mechless team. Never mind. Radiant Meanwhile, the Radiant are trying to drop this mid-tower, getting the push happening here, but here comes Storm Spirit from behind. He's going to try and pick up this Dragonite, likely. They throw down the Gush. Here we go. There's the Electric Vortex. Going to see the Overload stacked up. Another Overload thrown in there for good measure. SS takes some serious damage. Pops the Ravage. Hits two heroes. They get the Ravage stolen, though. Can Unstop set something up? He's going to take out Titan. Hits three heroes with the Weavers diving in there. Venomanta popping his ult. Now we've got the uh, S Storm Spirit diving in as well. Ball Lightning, but he's losing mana rapidly. Trying to get out. He's still got the ultimate on him. The Poison Nova. Down goes the Venomanta. Dual Breath. The macro pie thrown in for good measure. And now we've got Go Black on the run. Can they take him out and track to boost? And they do clean him up. And that was a fairly decent trade there for the Diet for the Radiant team. Although Queen of Pain gonna try and change that situation. Picks up a kill. Rubik is down. And they also get rid of Art Style on top of that. And it looks like M is the only one left standing. Unfortunately, I said it was I spoke a little bit too soon. Weaver got away. Queen of Pain came in. Scandal set the record straight and shut down Eclipsia. Meanwhile, DK still going back to the bottom lane, trying to farm that up once again. They have lost their bottom tower there, so it is becoming a relatively dangerous lane for them. Check that, they're definitely falling behind. 7.5 thousand gold behind. 2.5k experience behind as well as M likely to get picked off here again. We have a port in, it's Queen of Pain. Does she have countermeasures? Top tower gets denied. Queen of Pain just jumps in and screws his you know, countermeasures. Who needs counter invis? Let me just AoE the area, carpet bomb the area, that'll solve the issue. Superior firepower is all it takes. I thought it was I, I thought it was Titan coming for a second. Thought, yeah, you know, he'll come in, he'll dust things up, they'll try and take it, but no, Queen of Pain, just nuke the area. Problem solved. Now we've got the Medallion of Courage on Rubik. Look how fast he drops! His physical damage is ridiculous with his negative armor. Yeah, by Gush, maxed out Gush, maxed out Bugs, free, maxed out Bugs, as well as the Medallion. There is not a lot you can do about that. Now Dragonite senses he's in trouble, backing up there. It looks like he's decided, you know, I can't even afford to finish this, but I've got to get a big item here. He's saving up. He's decided, you know, I need a big item. I have to get into this battle. Storm Spirit now going to try and gank the Queen of Pain to back him up there. Does she have her ult? Still 30 seconds of cooldown. Doesn't matter though. They pop out enough physical DPS there and nukes to bring him down without the ultimate. M now searching the jungle for something to gank. Sees tight under it. Can't really solo him though. Tight under a bit uh, too ganky in that retrospect. Weaver has 1300 in the bank. Do you have anything on the courier? No, courier is empty for the moment. M unable to get any, do anything in this mid lane except leech experience. As it looks like, Go Black as well as Titan are playing very aggressively here. They're quite confident they can sit there. You don't normally see support heroes like this. You let, let me just sit 70 minutes, in, 70 minutes in the game. Let us just, the two of us, sit right in front of a tier 2 tower. And not really care about a positioning at all. Alright, that is a pretty bad sign. Just checking the build there. Chikira. Chikira has gone for a pretty stock standard build. And now we're going to see possibly pay the price. Now SS will escape just barely getting away. Bounty Hunter Shuriken missing by a hair's breadth. Unable to cancel that. And Jackal has gone back to the top lane. It looks like Dra Jackal has actually started to finish his boots. And also has bought up what looks to be the start of a BKB. Which will definitely help him out quite a bit. Meanwhile, Queen of Pain finds herself in invisibility room. Bounty Hunter gets picked off in the mid lane. Well, meanwhile in the jungle as well. They find a kill to boot. It was, in fact, Art Style, unfortunately, getting picked off once again. He is still working towards his second Oblivious. He's got his second Oblivious stuff, but at the very least, Art Style will have an Orchid very soon. Rubik now is also building himself some magic, oh, magic resistance there. Has picked up. I mean, she did max out the telekinesis. Didn't worry about getting the early. Sometimes we see two levels in telekinesis, then maxed out Nullfield. But it looks like he's just bought himself a cloak in the meantime, and he will be maxing out Nullfield last. Dragon Knight, though, pushing deep on his own up in the top lane. Meanwhile, they are going to lose the tier 2 mid tower. Also, the tier 2 bottom tower. Both of them are going to get wiped out there. We're going to take that one out. And now, I think Dragonite realizes he could be in some trouble. Is he going to try and dive in here? Telekinesis down Stormsburg. He will dive away, though. Do a barrel roll indeed. There's a dust getting popped. They're going to look for some targets. Dragon Stun. Dragon Tail getting thrown in there on SS. They have a bit of a chase happening here on M. M has been spotted. He's next to some wards. He's also been hit there by the Orchid. The damage amp should alone clean him up here, I think. No, it doesn't actually quite manage it. And it looks like M will somehow manage to escape there.
Mostly due to the track, allowing him to outpace the Queen of Pain. And surprisingly, no heroes falling. Despite them getting very, very close, M now teleporting out. Also, Queen of Pain going to head back to base for more mana. It looks like the Dyer making motions to go for Roshan here. Art style trying to pick up. A bit of farm in the jungle, still hasn't got his boots, just gonna tell he's just gonna you know what, let me just teleport around the map and just rush the hell out of this orchid. He is definitely one hell of a glass cannon at the moment though. All of eight hundred health. And you're up against Queen of Pain, Jakiro, Tidehunter, that is uh ballsy and it's gonna rely a lot on positioning. He does not want to get caught out because obviously without boots there's no way for him to escape at all. Bar a teleport. And considering Weaver's even finished his monkey king bar, that may not even be happening that much anymore either. Now Weaver will be taking this Aegis. Yep, there we go. He will be picking up the Aegis. There is a regen, regen rune there. Are they going to give it to Yes, Funnick will be taking that. He has also got a gem, so there is no room for Bounty Hunter for any shenanigans now. Here another Nature's Wrath coming through, and you should... Yes, there we go. Nature's Prophet has picked up his Orchid. I say he should have that by now. 20 minute orchid. Oh, big barrel roll there. Dives in. Can he pick up Venomancer? Venomancer pretty much insta give. And they have the gem as well. They should be able to bring down M. He doesn't have a track down. There we go. He's managed to track him up. And he gets the track down. But at the same time, we've got the steel there. What's to pick up? Ball lightning level 2. And he will bring down Arsal. Arsal is just so damn squishy. You throw him to negative armor. And there is no escape. The physical damage from Weaver right now is ridiculously high. What is, what is, what, yeah, Nature's Prophet has, like, he is down, like, once he gets hit by Medallion, that's pure damage. He has six armor. He gets hit by Medallion of Courage, Weaver is doing flat damage. Flat damage with a Monkey King bar. That is never, and as well as Geminate Attack. When you have all of 200 health and Weaver is doing, uh, sorry, when you're losing 400, 200 a hit and you have all of 800 health, it's like, what? Two, three hits from Weaver and you're gone. When you track to read the Geminate Attack. No way to escape from that. Storm now is working, is working on his Bloodstone. He'll be sorting out his mana issues there, hopefully. Of course, he does have the Orchid as well, but he does need the base pull at the moment, just to facilitate these super long jumps that he's been pulling off there. SS does get cleaned up. Arstyle picking up that kill, although the port gets cancelled. <laughs> Queen of Pain was thinking about it, then changed her mind. Nick, she decided, you know what, let's just gank the jungle here as Weaver managed to pick up another kill. In fact, Weaver decided to go top and actually picked him off there. Queen of Pain looking for this kill, hasn't managed to find anything though, so you can see Storm Spirit take out. Using that uh, remnant there just to get high ground vision, of course, flying vision from the remnant. Just so he can get vision on the high ground and clean up those plague wards. Radiance bottom tower under attack. So we were still farming this top lane. I think it's just a matter of time here when Empire decide to put in the boot and finish this. Just waiting for them to initiate the coup de grace. Meanwhile though, Queen of Pain also... Oh, Orchid's left, right and centre. Orchid. Orchid. Shakira not quite managing to pick up any items yet. It looks like they're going to be still... Yeah, they're still giving a bit of fun. Titan. Titan currently sitting on 900 gold. Shakira also camping a bit of gold as well. Titan went for an urn. Oh See Queen of Pain. Oh, there is just no room. Artstyle is just trying to farm everywhere and anywhere, and he's not. They're having none of it. Absolutely none of it. It's Queen of Pain. Actually, somebody is finally building. I think it's Tynander who is actually building the mech there. It's actually a relatively normal item for Tynander to pick up when he's in a sort of a supportive role. See, Weaver. It looks like he's also going to be working on his Manta style next. That will allow him to get rid of these tracks and annoying debuffs, as well as, of course, a poison there from Venomance. They will clean up this town nice and easy, though. And there we go. Ravage gets popped out there. Electric Vortex on Rubik as well. Rubik is cleaned up. Venomance and may actually escape for a change. Throws out the Venomous Scar, but now, unfortunately, looks like Bounty Hunter some serious trouble. Gets silenced up there. There is no escape. Where is there? Dodges the Anchor Smash. As now, look at that damage! On Art Style, there is no way for him to absorb it. He's just such a glass cannon, and Weaver takes full advantage of that and destroys him. Also, M getting picked off. As four heroes for none. Very low hero, low health heroes on Empire, but in the end, they, none of them managed to seal the deal there. 
Nature's Prophet doesn't have Wrath up either. I was going to say, they can pick off two, three heroes. That would be hilarious. And now Empire, they're just going to heal up on the move. Now it's actually Takiro who has picked up the mech instead. Takiro was actually beginning the farm there. Now Tidehunter saved up, bought himself a Blink Dagger. So he will be initiating with that. And Shakira picking up that mech, also a pretty damn common item on him, obviously just being a support hero. It's pretty much either that hood or a force stuff or any of those little cheap items. So here another dive in there as it looks like the next target is Rubik, although SL Funic decides not to dive in there. And Art Style still trying to farm somewhere on the map in peace. Get his quota filled. I don't think he's gonna have time though. What if we managed to steal there? Rubik has picked up Dill Breath. Nature's Wrath go through and just do just about nothing there. So there we go, level 2 Dragon form there from Dragon Knight. Gets a Dragon Tail down, twin head of Dragon, cleans him up with a couple of nukes there. And though it's the next to fall, a godlike streak there for Blow Your Brain. And a teleport out for Venomance who's trying to escape there. As it looks like they might clean up Weaver, although he's still got the Aegis. Pops the Mana Stop, dives back in, gets healed up, loses the heal immediately there to a dual breath. Weaver though, time lapsing back, gaining very little health. They clean up the Rubik though, and now M being body walked. They're trying to body block, it's not going to happen though, because he's wind walking. There we go, the nukes, the silence, it will clean him up. And an unstoppable streak there for Scandal. Weaver still on his godlike. And still has an Aegis to boot as well. And there is a GG from Eclipsia. That has been a quick 2-0 sweep there from Empire. Took Empire a little bit to get into this game, rather to get into this series. They were of course a late party in the series, but when they got here they did clean up nice and easy. So congratulations to them. Now guys, uh, after this uh, end screen flicks over, we will be going over to a uh, we will be going over to an interview with uh, a member from Empire and at the same time probably talking to Goblin in a second. Also. Also, stick around. We do have um, Meet Your Makers versus Diggers is coming up. That will be at 9 p.m. Central European time. So stick around for that as well. We may or we may not start that a little early. I'm not sure. We'll find out. Anyway, guys, this has been Trapper Man casting the Premier League Season 3. Eclipse, you're losing out to Empire here in a quick 2-0 series. I would like to give a big shout-out to our sponsors, Twitch TD, as well as Steel Series. And, of course, guys, if you are looking... For uh, some kind of work, we do have a Dota 2 bundle that is being given away. There is a competition running. We do have a drawing contest as well as a video editing contest. Do see the Premier League.eu for more information. But stick around. I will be back with a, a with an interview with somebody from Empire in just a few moments. So stick. So stay tuned, please.